I want to share something very interesting. Those of you watching online, God bless you. You will surely be blessed. This is the kind of message I want to first. It's not the kind of message where you will hear too many amen. It's the kind of message where everybody will be calm and be looking. Because it will touch you and touch your brother. But the truth of the matter is, God is up to something. Amen? Hallelujah. As children of God, by creation, we were given power and authority. Somebody say power and authority. Say it again. Say power and authority. Say it again. Say power and authority. You know, on Wednesday when I declared what I was going to be sharing, some people laughed because I said it might change. So they were like, uh -huh. I'm still sticking to what I said. By creation, every child of God was given power and authority. The name of the power and authority given to us in combination, when you bring them together, is what the Bible calls dominion. Dominion. Somebody say dominion. Dominion constitutes all of them. It constitutes all of them. By creation, when man was created, God gave to man what we call dominion. It means that you and I are not ordinary. We are not ordinary people. We are not ordinary creation. We are not ordinary creature. Whether you are making use of it or not is up to you. It's up to you. Not up to God. Not up to anybody. But up to you. But by creation, you were given power and authority. And that is what we call dominion. Somebody say dominion. By this mandate, by this dominion that God gave to us, there are things that God expects our lives to produce. There are things that he expects us to do with it. There's a way he wants our life to be mapped out. He doesn't want us to just function anyhow, to behave anyhow, by the dominion that the Spirit of God had given to you and I, there are things concerning the earth that God wants us to use this dominion for. The dominion that God gave to us is not to be exercised on another human being. No, sir. No, sir. If you study the concept of dominion that was given to man, he said, let them have dominion over everything that God created. Over the creeping things, the things that move, the things that fly, the things that swim. He never said over man, which means you were never given dominion to exercise it over another man. God didn't make it so. God didn't create it so. From creation, it was not so. God has his plans. Hallelujah. And when it comes to the earth, the functioning of the earth, the dominion given to you is also for something. For instance, the earth was created for a particular reason. It was a dwelling place for man. That is God's original plan. The heavens of heaven belong to him. The earth he has given to the sons of men. So God created the earth for you and I. Now, in the earth, there are a lot of goodies that God put in there. For instance, Psalm 104 Verse 24. Psalm 104, verse 24. Are you there? Psalm 104, 24, King James. Thank you. Look at what it says. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. 
in wisdom has thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. By creation. There are enough riches in the earth. To fill all of mankind. To contain all of mankind. It is because, look up. You know we have traffic. Especially in Lagos. There's no path of this country that has experienced the level of traffic that Lagos had given to us. Lagos is a center of traffic excellence. Everything here. You want to move from here to here? Forget it. Have you ever heard the reason for the traffic is our making? It's our making. It's our making. Have you ever heard that you woke up one day and they say breaking news. There's traffic in the cloud. The beds are looking for an alternative. Do you know that we have more fishes in the sea, rivers and streams than all of mankind? But yet you have never heard that you have traffic in the sea. That the seas are not looking for gutter or people's house to pass to get to their destination. They are uniform in behavior. They respect themselves and there's, there's no problem. But man, the traffic level in Texas in America is something else. So it's not, it's our making. It is space. There is a reason for that. And just like we have some people who go there and put water bottle, we have people who intentionally too drive and stop. Do you remember one time there was this traffic that lingered for like Bini or a road? It was it was on it came out on on the dailies. A man, a northerner, driving trailer with his friend, parked on the road and decided to pray. While the traffic kept piling. Then the military began to trace where is this thing coming from. Only to discover. That some people's mind and brain malfunction. And they brought out their koboko. You want to tell me that if you don't pray there. That God, your God will not hear you. Are you following what I'm saying now? That is to tell you the kind of people we have. The same thing you've never heard. That the bears are queuing and saying that there's traffic. The Bible says the whole earth is full of God's riches. Which means in this earth, there are enough riches that can cover all of us. And yet, there will still be enough for everybody. So why the killing? Greed. Why the killing? Envy. Why the killing? Jealousy. Like I'm standing on this pulpit now. The presence of Pastor Bina here is annoying certain people somewhere. That you are sitting here now and you are alive. It's making someone somewhere angry that your business is doing well. The idea that God gave to you is functioning. It's making someone somewhere angry for nothing. That is why Africa remains the way it is. But the Bible just showed us that there are enough riches in the earth to cover all of us. What a God. He never created any scarcity. Everything he did, there was surplus. He put it in the earth and says, let it be so. Question, have we all tapped into the riches? Have all of mankind tapped into the riches? It is said that the first, the statistics shows that the five richest guys in the world will feed, two of their riches will feed for 20 years all of the population of Africa. Two guys. Their riches will feed you for 20 years. And yet, we are told that there are no enough riches 
to cater for us. All of the GDP of the Indian, the Asia, the Africa, and some Northern African, all of their GDP is controlled by the three most richest guys in the world. But yet, the riches of God is abound. It's, it's, it's everywhere. But not everybody has been able to tap in into it. You look at these guys. They do not have the university qualification like you think you do. They just opened up to something and something happened to them and they turned out to become something. I remember, just look at, there's no need going to that because that's not, if I delve into that now, we might not come out of that. But you ask them, what do they really do to give them all of this wealth? What do they really do? They tap into something and the riches of the earth began to vomit to them. And God is waiting for you to also tap. Just because someone is selling MTN card does not mean that all of us will sell MTN card. It is the craziness and the madness of the African people. That if a woman is selling jello fries and crowd follows and comes to buy jello fries, the next day you see another person put table by the side of that one selling jello fries and she's selling jello fries and fried rice. Then the next thing you see, she, 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 she cut off the flow and she goes to a native doctor, pours charm on this woman, her leg is swollen. Before you know it, she's dead. So to collect the customer, after two months, she can't do the business. This is the madness we see in Africa. It's only in Africa that four people are selling Indomie together. One, two, three, four. Indomie and egg. Indomie and egg. Four of them. So what is the problem? But the earth is full of thy riches. Look at Psalm 119 verse 64. Psalm 119 verse 64. Are you there? The earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. He now says, teach me thy statutes. It's not only the riches. He says, the earth also is full of thy mercy. Which means there's mercy everywhere. Because the only thing you need to make contact to that riches, or with that riches, is the mercy of God. And he's telling you, that the mercy of God is everywhere in the earth. Question, have we all tapped into the mercy of God? No, sir. Have all of mankind tapped into it? No, sir. Because if we have, we wouldn't have been where we are today. I'm showing you some of the things that you find in the earth. Riches, mercy. Look at Psalm 33 verse 5. Riches, mercy, Psalm 33 verse 5. It says, he loved righteousness and judgment. He loved righteousness and judgment. Then he says, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Full of the goodness of the Lord. So we find the earth is full of riches. The earth is full of mercy. The earth is full of goodness. Have we all tapped into it? No, sir. No, sir. So what are we doing? How many are enjoying it? These blessings are there. All of these things, God puts them in the earth. But you know the problem? The moment man fell, everything changed. Did God remove them? No, he didn't remove them. Now we have to exert so much strength in order to tap into these things. This is one of the reasons why he gave you the authority and the power. This is one of the reasons why he gave you the dominion. After the fall of man, something happened to all of these things. Satan, Satan became the God. He now started ruling. The riches, you won't tap into it. The mercy, he doesn't want you to tap into it. His goodness, he doesn't want you to tap into it. This is one of the reasons why the Lord gave you dominion. Because Satan is not going to fold his hands and watch you tap into these things like that. 
No, it's not possible. You must learn what I call the act of commanding. The act of commanding. It is in the place of commanding that you make use of the power, the authority, the dominion that the Lord had given to you. One of them is the art of commanding. You must learn to command. You must learn to command. Satan won't leave your family like that. You must learn to command. Satan won't let your children go like that. You must learn to command. Satan won't take his hands off of the blessings that are yours. You must learn to command. Just because God has given them to you does not mean that you enjoy them like that. You must learn, learn the act of commanding. You must know how to command. That commanding is what the Bible called decree. It says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be what? Established. You must learn how to command. You must learn the act of commanding. It is an exercise in your dominion. You can fold your hands and allow things be. No, sir. The same thing I'm telling you. The year, this year, will not just open up to you. In riches, in mercy, and in goodness. Until you learn the act of commanding. Don't think that you will just walk into things like that. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. You must learn the act of commanding. You must learn how to use your mouth. You must learn how to use your authority. You must learn how to use your power. You must learn how to use the dominion that he gave to you. For instance, Job chapter 38 verse 12. What am I supposed to be commanding, sir? Should I just be commanding everything? Job 38 verse 12 will show us something. Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and cause the day spring to know his place. Have you learned the art of commanding your morning and the day spring to put it in his place? What will be the result? Verse 13. That it might, that it might take, the, take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Shaken out of it. The wicked are piping to know the next move of God for your life. The wicked are piping to know the next celebration for your family. The wicked are piping. They want to know when the right thing is going to happen to you. But you must learn how to shake them out of it. Shake them out of your blessing. Shake them out of your mercy. Shake them out of your goodness. Shake them out of your riches. God has given them to you. This is one of the things you must do. You must learn how to shake them out. The word is not for those who cry. The word is for those who exercise dominion. You must learn how to shake them out of it. Shake them out. Have you learned how to command your money? Which means God gave you the right to command your money. Give me that verse 12 again. Have you learned how to command your money? Since thy days and cause the day spring to know its place. That means you learn to put the afternoon where it belongs, the evening where it belongs, the night where it belongs, and you shake out the wickedness out of your day. Shake out the wickedness from your morning. That those who will arise against the blessings of God for your life, in the morning of your life, be shaken out. Take them out. He's telling you what you should do. If God has said, have you commanded? He's asking us if we have commanded our morning. Which means the same question should be put to us. Have you commanded your 2023? Have you commanded your 2023? Have you told 2023 the kind of sales you want to be having? Have you spoken to each month and tell the month that this is the kind of client and space that I want? Have you shaken out the evil out of each month? You know, 
we just sit down and say, well, I don't know. Anyhow, it be, go be. Lift your right hand. Say, no evil shall come near my dwelling this year. Say it again. Say, no evil shall come near my dwelling this year. Have you commanded? You hear believer praying, oh God, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, Father. Don't put me to shame. I'm begging you, oh God. You're begging him. He's asking you, have you commanded your morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know the day spring to know his place? The day spring to know his place. Right now, stretch your two hands towards the altar. Say January. January. I shall not lack. lack. February. February. I I shall not lack. Listen, this is how. You tell February, every Monday in February, I want to seal up deals. Stretch your hands towards me. Say January. January. The end of you, end of you. For, me, for me is good news. Is good news. All through. You know what you're doing now? You're commanding. But what is today's date? Huh? It's as if you woke up late. It's as if some of us woke up late. You're commanding the year on the 22nd day of the year. It's as if you woke up late. But can I tell you something? It's better to even wake up Than not to wake at all. But I'm showing you principles. That's why I'm building them. Now I'm going to show you. Sometimes you don't command with words. You don't just start shouting. You know, over the years, each time I read the scriptures, I always say, I always have this question. I never find Jesus Christ walking up and saying, I have the life of God in me. I refuse to die. I refuse to die. I refuse sickness. I will not be sick. HIV will not come to me. Tuberculosis will not come to me. I will not have cancer. I will not have, I will not lack money. I never find Jesus doing those things. So, and that's, you know, that's exactly what most times we're trained to do. You know, I, I refuse it. And I, I always ask the Lord, Lord, you never, you never lived like this. And he told me something. He said, I live in them. It is my everyday consciousness. That means you have so, you have so spoken. You have so deliberated that it has become your life. I want to show you how also not to be speaking, but yet you are commanding. There are ways to command. Sometimes you speak. Sometimes you just stand and things align themselves. Can I, can we delve in? This is where it's going to get contagious now. Mm, Because you might not like this one. But the story is given in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let's take it from there. First Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. All right? Are you there? All right, let's do it. From verse 1. Can we read together? There's a reason I want us to read together. (laughs) If you know the reason, wave your right hand. (laughs) 
What is the reason? <laughs> Some people are saying Hamatan. <laughs> we are going to read it together. Today, Ramadan, Nabi. <laughs> in the fig tree. That's what you will see. But we will read it together. Every time you want to be hearing. Today too, I want to hear you. Come on, read. One, two, go. Ebe. <laughs> Ramadan. Mofi. <laughs> ah. Read it again louder. One, two, go. <laughs> continue, continue. You are doing well. Of what? Mount what? And his name was what? The son of what? The son of what? The son of who? The son of who? And <laughs> clap for yourself. You pass jam. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Some of you are sweating right now. Because of Ramoth Mosef. Clap for me. I thought you were supposed to clap for me. You were not sweating. <laughs> leave the <laughs> leave the whole name. Let's focus on the main thing. There was a man there whose name was what? Elkanah. Elkanah. Anytime you're reading the Bible and you find El. El is God. So, it's a combination of two, like, I'll give you an example. In, in, in the East, they usually have Chizoba, Chimuike, Chimwako, Chimwego, Chimwanya, Chichichi, Chichi, Chichi, Chichi. So, you come to Yoruba, Oluwa Tobi, Oluwa Timilenyi, Oluwa Gbemiga, Oluwa. You get what I'm saying now? So, Oluwa is she. So, they have it too. You are not the first. El Kana. Kana means obtained. Or created. So, it means God created. Or God obtained. Which means this guy was actually obtained from the Lord. His name was called El Kana. Am I helping some? Alright? Let's keep going. Now, the Bible says he is a son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu. Now, that's the grandfather. The son of Tuhu. Great grand word. Are you with me? The son of Zuf. Great, great grand. And he's from what? Ephraim. Are you with me now? Now, this guy, Elkanah, was the father of Prophet Samuel. The, prof, the prophet Samuel, this is his father. Verse 2 tells us something. I, I want to show you how to command. And he had two wives. The reason for the two wives was not an intentional act. It was the fact that family came up and they began to suggest, suggestive opinion, that you must take a second wife. Because the first one never bore a child. And you know in those days, that's how they. Some families are still like that today. Yes. You marry 5, 10, 15, 20 years, she has no child. Say, okay, this lineage must not get another wife. Why you continue to wait by faith? But get another one. All right? The name of one was Hannah. For, so, going by... Are you still with me? Chronological construction. The one that comes first shows you the first. So Hannah came first and the name of the other one is what? Penina. And Penina had children but Hannah had no children. 
Penina had children. But Hannah had no children. Verse 3. I want to show you, you know, in Job, where we read, he says, have you commanded your what? Morning. Have you told the day spring where to stay? So now there's something we get from here. He says, and this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. This is where the title of the message came from. The yearly worship and sacrifice. Are you still with me? There are things that when you study the scriptures, you will not see as a command. But they came as a practice of certain individual that worked with them over time. And by that thing, they gained victory and success in God. One of them is this. There is no place in the scriptures where you will read and you will find where it says, And thou shalt observe a yearly sacrifice and worship. There is no such thing. But this guy, by his name alone, God obtained, meaning that I was obtained from the Lord, coined out a principle by which he will live his life. And that principle is that every year, the way I open up the year and command the year to align for me is to have what I call a yearly worship and sacrifice. That he would take all his household and go with them to the place where they observe this yearly worship and yearly what? Sacrifice. This is how this man had learned to command his year and put it in the right place. Meaning that if a man by faith would tap into the ordinances that Elkanah, God obtained. That means if you ever want to obtain things from the Lord then you have to follow the principle of the man who obtained it. That no man obtains things from the Lord. That there shall be no Elkanah in your life, God obtained, without following the principles of Elkanah. And the principles that Elkanah lived by and functioned by is that the man would always yearly, before he does anything, before he do anything in his life, there is something he does which is called the yearly worship and the yearly what? Sacrifice. And this is what the man does. Verse 4. Verse 4 shows us something now. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, offered what? The sacrifice. There is something he usually would offer. The Bible says he gave to Peninia, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, portions. Give me that in the message translation. When it was time for him to offer the sacrifice, he called his children and Peninia, the wife, look at it. Sacrifice, when Elkanah sacrificed, he passed helpings from the sacrificial meal around to his wife, Peninia, and all her children. I, I want to bring it in the New Living Translation. Watch this now. On the days Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Peninia and each of her children. So if they were ten, then Peninia, the mother, Elkanah, God obtained, would give to the wife and give to each children a portion and they would all go together to offer the sacrifice. It means that this guy had learned this thing before he got married. It was not an act he developed. Maybe when he married the first wife and discovered that she was barren, then all of a sudden, a revelation hits the guy that he now vowed that if the Lord would do this for me, this is how I am going to be commanding my year. We never knew what happened. 
But what we know was that if this guy's name means God obtained and you are ever going to obtain things from the spirit realm, then you must function by the principle of having to order your year, command your year by doing what he does, which is you must have in your privacy a yearly sacrifice and worship and you must never miss it. This was how this guy would order his life, which means he would give something to those children and they will worship the Lord from the back down to the front. They will worship. By the time they worship and worship and worship, then they will present it, drop it there and walk out. You must understand something. And I'm giving you a lifetime secret that you must teach your children and practice it and it must continue in your children's children and the lineage will continue like that. Are you with me? Such that as they grow up, you recite it in their ears that no matter what happens to you, you must never fail God. One day, I picked up, this is bro, if I, you know, I was discussing with bro in the car and I told him something. I said, okay, we, we actually went to dedicate his building. I prayed and I was magnifying the Lord. While we were going, I told Broizu something. I said, this was what I got from the first day I met this man. I remember we were still building, we we're still coming here and both of us sat down here. I invited him to come. We still have those empty lands and we're starting to sound feel. And we sat down there and I told him, just tell me how you came to giftings. That's all I want to know. So he was trying to narrate how he's an Anglican church and all of that. But I did not tell him the reason for the question. I saw in the realm of the spirit that this guy is going to be a magnificent, prosperous man. He's going to prosper. And I began to trace, to watch the lifestyle of the man. If it was the man. And I discovered that it was not him. He was not the reason for the prosperity that he will enjoy. And when I looked, I saw in the spirit, it was the mother. And I told Bryce, I said, the mother is the reason why this guy is going to be blessed. And he cannot die untimely. Even if he had an accident and the car squeezed, he will come out. I've not told him this because I don't need to tell him. You know why? Because the mother always would go to the house of God and drop a sacrifice. She has a Bible, an old Bible. We are inside the Bible, the pictures of all her children and attached to it as sacrifices. She will go there and put it and say, God, I am an old woman, but my children must be blessed and they must not die before me. This became an ordinance. She would give to the Lord sacrifice, no matter how small, no matter how big, she honors them. Now, watch this. Paul, writing to Timothy, he said, I perceive that the faith that is in you started with your mother, but not just your mother. I could trace it to your grandmother, which means whatever we teach right now, whatever we do right now, carries in into our children. From our children, taps in into our grandchildren. From our grandchildren to our great-grandchildren. Winning, we are living a posterity that will last forever. Before Isaac woke up to pay tithe, he never knew that while he was in the mother's womb, Abraham, his father, had tithed. Are you with me? Little wonder when the guy grew up, he just followed the ordinance. The thing would just well up on his inside. Go and give this thing. And Jacob also, go and give this. And Joseph also, go and give this. And all the patriarchs did that because their father. So I want to teach you how to have that continual stream of success and life, not by coming out to command, but your life becoming a life of commanding. And that thing is that if you're ever going to obtain anything from the most high, which is Elkanah, if Elkanah is ever going to be situated, planted and buried in your family, you must have what we call the yearly worship and sacrifice. At this point, the Lord said we should clap for him. <laughs> Amen. Understand something. Romans chapter 15 verse number 4 tells us something very peculiar and very important. Are you still with me? Am I boring you? No. Learn something today. Poverty is out of your lineage completely. Yeah. 
because of you your children will tap into the goodness of the earth the riches of the earth and the mercy of the earth that when they are killing people killing people and they come to their tongue they'll say there's something about you shift to this side why because somewhere along the line the parent has spoken to god in covenant Yearly worship and sacrifice. Everything the Bible says in Romans 15 verse 4. Verse 4, not 14. Verse 4. Please follow me. Don't miss me here. If you miss me, you didn't come. Because I just started preaching. In Romans 15 verse 4, it says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime. Mm. If you don't understand English of, of aforetime, let's break it. Give me the amplified. Aforetime. Uh, aforetime. A four time. Mm, a four. For whatever was thus written in former days. If you don't understand former days, give me the message translation. A four time, former days. A four time, former days. Even if it was written in scripture long ago. Did you understand long ago? You can be sure it was written for us. What do you mean for us? Go back to King James. Now. We will remove our fourth time and put long ago. Mm, I've helped you. All right, King James. For whatsoever things were written long ago, they were written for our what? Learning. They were written for our learning. All the things that were written before now, long ago, they were written for our what? Learning. Brothers and sisters, what is the four purpose? What is the five purpose of learning? There must be a reason why God wants us to learn. Why does he want us to learn? Why were things written in the Old Testament? They were written for our learning. What is the purpose of learning? Are you there? Why was this story we read written for our learning? What is the purpose of learning? Number one. The, one of the purpose of learning is for you to know. K-N-O-W. For you to know. Know that these things happen for you to know. That's the first purpose of learning. For you to what? No. Are you with me? Gifting so. The first is for you to what? No. Thank you. It's for you to what? That's the first purpose. Number two. Not only does he want us to know. The second purpose of learning is to do. That means to practice. Are you learning? You see now you're learning. To know. I'm teaching you so that you could know. It's one of the purpose of learning that you will know. The second one is in knowing that you want to do. That means that you practice. Number three. The third purpose of learning is to live by. That means it becomes a principle you live by. That you will teach other people. To live by it. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Lift your right hand and say, thank you, Jesus. See, I'm teaching you well. So in turn, you should feed me well. You cook good food. Number four. The fourth purpose of learning is so that you will become. You learn to become. You know, in the world, we were raised, we were sent to school to have. No institution in the world trains you to become. You didn't get it. It is to have. To end. No institution in the world teaches you to become. No, sir. They want you to, be, to have money. They want you to have this, have that. No institution teaches you to become. What did the Bible say? In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall become witnesses. It's only in Christ you are raised to become. Number five. The fifth purpose of learning is to avoid. All the things that were written long ago were written for our learning. Number one, that you may know. Number two, that you may do. Number three, that you may live by. Number four, that you may become. Number five, that you may avoid. Don't walk. The reason why the book of Samson, we read about Samson, is so that you, if you carry such an anointing, avoid the pitfalls of Samson. Avoid it. But when we read Elkanah, God obtained, God created, that you want God, if you ever get to a point in your life that you want to obtain certain things with God, I want you to learn these, learn these, learn these, learn to do what Elkanah did that you may obtain what Elkanah obtained. When we read Solomon, you read the book of Proverbs, you will see his affairs with many women. One of the reasons why we read 2 Kings and 1 Kings, it was written for us, is so that we don't walk the path of Solomon. Avoid it. Don't have 700 wives, 300 concubines. 300 wives, 700 concubines. Don't have too many, too many babes. Avoid that one. You didn't hear me. Avoid that one. One of the reasons why the story of Gehazi was written for us is so that we could avoid it. Don't follow the person your master says don't follow. And collect money from the person your master rejected from. So that the leprosy of what your master rejected will not follow you. Avoid it. The reason why the story of Judas was written is so that we don't sell our master. Are you with me? The reason why the story of Hannah was written is so you will know that there are people who are barren. And they came out of barrenness by vow. Learn to do. The reason the story of Abraham was written is so you know that you don't give up even at 90. That by faith you can obtain the promises of God. By faith. By faith. It was written so you do. That one was not written so you avoid. No sir. That one was written so you do. Then he says, I know Abraham for he will command his house. That's a principle to live by. Learn this one. Are you with me? <laughs> Celebrate God. Oh. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, calm down. So now, every year, we find Elkanah, God obtained, having what he practiced. Now, we never saw it written as a command in the scriptures. But a man practiced it. And he kept obtaining. It was in one of such occasions. The Bible says, Hannah was giving more than Penina and her children were giving. But this time around, she decided to wait. While they were sleeping, she took, she had offered her own sacrifice. She had given her own sacrifice. But while the husband were sleeping, she woke up very early in the morning to offer what the husband could not offer. Learn that one to do. She came out because she was the one with the issue, not the husband. She has seen that the husband is fertile. Brothers and sisters, the problem is coming from me. Sometimes as a leader, you come out of the congregation and come out of the people you are working with. Sometimes as a boss, you single yourself out to seek God by yourself. To know why these things are the way they are. I should have broken this. I should have overcome this. Why is this thing still happening? You come out of the cloud. You don't wait until there's a general fast. You ordain a fast. So Hannah woke up early in the morning. And went to that place. And she now before the altar. Began to mutter words. Question. Who taught her? Nobody knew. But certain things are revelation personal to you. That a man can tap into and gain from. We saw Hannah. For the spirit of God to permit it to be written. Is because he wants us to learn from her. That means it was God who engineered Hannah to wake up and move. If not for that, the realm of vow wouldn't have been open to us. Am I talking to someone? 
So now she came. And this time around, nobody heard her words. She was talking. And the priest said, you are drunk. She said, no, sir. For the first time, your prophecy is wrong, sir. I am not drunk. I'm a woman whose heart is full of sorrow. Which means when you are sorrowful, where you should be found is in the presence of God. When things are not going well, don't heap the anger or the blame upon Pastor Bina or your husband or your guy or your boss. Face the altar. Put it on the altar. The man said so. He said I'm a man full of... The funny thing was that she didn't tell the priest what the problem was. The priest only said stand up. May the Lord do unto you as you have said. Go. She left that place for the first time. The Bible says all the years she has been attending Shiloh, she never went and came back with joy, but she left that place with joy. Madam, your husband has not slept with you. How come you have joy that you have received? Only with joy shall you draw waters out of the well of salvation. No matter what I preach and teach, and you are shouting, hum, ha, hum, as though something is smelling. If you don't take joy out of this place, nothing will be bettered. But if there's joy in you, receive. Yeah. Showing you how to have this commanded life. So she left the place. She was happy. I want to believe something happened. When she got home. Because she was the only one that had direct access to the husband. The husband does not love Peninia. He loves Hannah. Slept with her. And the next thing we noticed was that she was pregnant. The next Shiloh she was coming. She came with testimonies and joy. I want to believe by this time next year. That somebody will come for service. There will be a joy inside of you. Knowing that the Lord has performed what he said he will perform. If you believe it, lift your two hands and shout a crazy amen. amen. Give someone a high five. Say thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One thing you get when you come with Pastor Bina is not only the miraculous anointing. But I will teach you principles by which you can live by. Mm. That one will outlive. Even the day Christ comes and we are no more. And you find yourself. Those principles are still there. You can practice them in Ghana. You can practice them in Hong Kong. You can practice them in Asia. You can practice them in Oyo. You can practice them in Kaduna. It works. It's a law. It's a law. Give someone a high ten. Say we are learning. We are learning. We are learning. We are learning. Do you remember the five purpose of learning? To do. Is that not it? Alright, so let us see what this Elkanah, God obtained, did. He told us he yearly would worship and would what? Sacrifice. So what was the sacrifice? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Proverbs 3, verse 9. The worship that Elkanah God obtained. The guy said, if I will ever obtain something yearly. If you will command your year to produce something. And you obtain something from the Lord. There is an act of worship. An act of sacrifice. That is a product of your commanding. I do not have to be commanding and binding. But I practice them as a principle. And they produce results. So the worship there that we find there is a product of honor. The worship there is honor. When you honor a man, you value the person. Honor is value. Honor is first place. Honor is headship. Honor is lordship. Can we read it together? One, two, go. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. What will be the result? Verse 10, verse 6, verse 10, sorry. This is the result. One, two, go. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Somebody say amen. amen. This was exactly what Elkanah 
was doing. Go back to verse 9. Elkanah, God obtained, will start the year by worshipping and giving to the Lord what you call the first fruit. This is his first. That I was earning, you know, remember in those days, we read something, we read something. The Bible says he distributed a portion of meat to them. Mm -hmm. It shows you the man's trade. Because in those days, there were two notable jobs. You are either a farmer or you rear animals. Are you with me? Not like today. Scattered, we do a lot of things. But this guy adopted a principle, a way of life. And the Bible says, I want you to learn them. Because the things that were written long ago were written for your learning. That the guy did, will not start the year without first having what he calls a yearly worship and sacrifice. And what he goes to the altar of God to do in the place of the sacrifice is to honor the Lord with the first fruit. And that in turn. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you why I'm thinking later. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? So he would worship the Lord with it. And offer the sacrifice, which is the first fruit. And you know what the Bible says? He says, lendies. Why were we told to learn it? That we may practice it. How many of you want to obtain things from the Lord? You want to obtain? Are you very sure that you want to obtain? He says, if your banks are ever going to be full and your press is bust out, then you must understand this principle and live by it. This is one of the ways you live a commanded life without your mouth opening. That Hannah's mouth never opened, but she made a vow. She made a vow, but yet nobody heard what she said. And when the Lord, when the time came, she brought her vow. The Bible says her womb continued. To what? To open. And she started bearing. Which means if the year is ever going to become productive, you are going to see things done in a, in a big way that will beat your own imagination and said, I never saw it from this light. Then you must have, that is to obtain things from the Lord, then you must live by the principle of the yearly worship and sacrifice. You take it and say, this is my first fruit. And I'm going to the house of the Lord. Can I tell you something? First fruit should not be forced. It should be a personal conviction. Because we never saw Elkanah being forced to do it. It was a personal conviction. It was a personal revelation that this is how I am going to live. So what does the man do? Ezekiel chapter 44 verse number 30. And the first of all the first fruit of all things and every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblations shall be the priest. You shall also give unto the priest the first of your thou that he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. That he may cause the blessing to rest in your house. Now, there are many things you look at when it comes to this subject. Everybody raise your hand. Because we are looking at the act of worship, yearly worship, and what? Sacrifice. Because we want to obtain Elkanah. Let me break something down for some people. Because when it has to do with our money, there are many issues in the body of Christ. There are many things, many things that have become contradictory in the body of Christ today. Many things. Many subjects. First in the least 
is the subject that had to do with giving. But this is where this man operated from. And this is where this man gained it from. That if you are ever going to obtain anything from the Lord as Elkanah, then you must have a life. A lifestyle that worships the Lord and a lifestyle that gives sacrificially. The year will not open for Elkanah if he doesn't offer the worship and the sacrifice. And if it was written for our learning, then we must understand this and indoctrinate it into our lives. That the year has not opened for us until we learn the act of what? Worship and sacrifice. And the sacrifice here, the sacrifice in question here is the sacrifice of the first fruit. Because this is the first. I want you to understand something. The Bible When we talk about the Bible, the Bible is a book of salvation. But the Bible is not all about salvation. The Bible is a Christocentric book, which means the center is Christ. But it is not all about Christ. Because we find angels speaking there. We also find the revelation of Satan in the Bible. Which means everything you find in the Bible is not all about God. There are other entities and things that spoke in the Bible. But God's concentration when it comes to do it, when the Bible is there, is that God in his mercy gave to us the few things he wants our concentration to be on. For instance, have you heard what the Yoruba calls Abiku? There's a mystery surrounding Obanje. Abiku, that a man dies here and all of a sudden they saw him appear in Calabar. Have you heard of that thing before? How many of you have heard it? When you open the Bible, you will not find any of such chapter. Abiku chapter 3 verse 2. Which means God is a bit silent when it comes to such matters. Why? Because of the issue of doctrine. He does not want to overstretch things so that mortals. So what we do is that we pick fragments of things in the scriptures and try to marry them together and give explanations to certain things. Are you with me? I can go on and on and give you plenty examples of things that thank God for Christ before now. One of the explanations they give when a woman gives birth and the child is blind or deaf is that the parents have sinned. Thank God for Christ who came and said, it is not the parents, neither is it the children. But this is the work of the devil and that's why I came. I want to show you something. Oh, do I have time? Should I continue? <laughs> uh, on a, on a no, no. Hmm. But it's good to know. Huh? For instance, Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning. Huh? That is in the beginning. I stumbled on something again in Matthew chapter 19, from the beginning. There is a difference between in the beginning and from the beginning. In differentiating the two and trying to dissect it, what does it mean when the phrase is given that in the beginning, God created. And Jesus says, from the beginning, it was not so. Which one is the from? Which one is in? The Bible says a boy, a guy was caught. In the book of Acts chapter 3, there was a guy that was lame there. The Bible says, lame from the mother's womb. Mm. Okay, keep it there. Keep it there. We'll push it. Huh? We'll push it. To the day where maturity will come to your spirit, you understand what I want to say. That when the Bible says, in the beginning, God created. There was a day called beginning. But there were life before the beginning. But from the beginning, that day, it was not so. 
So when I begin to bring clarity to that, you will know why certain battles start from the beginning. That certain families from the womb started their battle. And there's a way to end such. And there are those who started when they were in secondary school. And there were those who started when they gave their life to Christ. There were those who started when they climbed the tree. There were those who started when they went to fetch water in the stream. That was the day it started. But there was one who started from the womb. David said, In sin was I conceived. So now you begin to look at certain things and bring understanding. We need clarity to some issues. We just need an understanding. So the Bible that you and I hold is not all about salvation. There are other things that were written there. Are you with me? Genesis chapter 4 from verse 1. Let's, there's a confusion. Let's deal with it. Somebody say, hmm. Are you learning? Even if I stop here, you have learned enough. Mm. But I want to help some people. Because the very first offering that the Bible ever mentioned is the first one. Do you notice that there were two human beings that God created? Adam and Eve. They gave birth to Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel are our brothers. Adam and Eve are not our parents. We can relate with Cain and Abel because they were born as every human. But we can't relate with Adam and Eve because they were created. Hello? Hello? The dealings that God had with Adam and Eve, you cannot translate you can bring into record because they were created. You can only start the record with Cain and Abel because they were born like every other human. That is why we can't start our relationship with the Christ that was born. We will start our relationship with the Christ that was raised. Because of his fullness, he begat. It was when he came back that he was born again. So we can relate with the born again Christ. But the other one was created because it was not by his sperm. Just like Adam and Eve. So there were many things the Bible wrote about Adam and Eve that the Bible would have written. But he couldn't write to us because we have no relation with them. He could have started, he started with Cain and Abel because they were the ones born that we could relate with. On our dog, more go. Tell, tell your neighbor, calm down. Be, be digesting. It will take you years. But just be digesting. Be digesting. Be digesting. Be digesting. If you wait for the devil to tempt you like he tempted Eve, you're wasting your time. She was created. The temptation he would tempt you with, go and trace your Cain and Abel. Because that one was born. <laughs> Brazil. Okay, okay. You have a question? <laughs> okay, let's go. Home. Do you understand worship and sacrifice? <laughs> You understood sacrifice and worship. Hold down where you understand. Leave Genesis 1, 2, 3. Start your life from 4. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and birth came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. This is the man you should relate with because he had the same experience with you. I have gotten a man from the Lord. All right? Verse 2. Watch this now. 
and she bare again his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. The first thing you see, the way you are looking at me, I don't like. Are you calm? Uh, the first thing you see is that Abel was a keeper, but Cain was a tiller, meaning they both have work. A human being without a work is irresponsible. You first see that. You must have something you are about doing. Mm. There's something you are doing. Whether you clean, you cook, you mob, but you must do something. Because we saw that. So, Work is the means by which we cultivate the resources of that earth. The riches, the mercy, and the goodness that is there. Work is the way by which we cultivate it. Are you still with me? Some of you have lost me. You have missed me. I'm trying to digress from what I said because I could see that if I flow in that rhythm, I might just be talking to myself. Verse 3. Watch this. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering. Somebody say offering. The Hebrew word is minka for the word offering. Minka. And minka means a sacrifice, a portion, a donation, a gift, a present, or a tribute. That is what minka means. The Bible says, in the process of time, they brought. Now, look up. There were many things that played a role here that we may not see. One of them is this. Just like I said, and that's why I said, there is no way you could pick your teachings or principles from Adam and Eve because they would have a direct contact with the Lord. The Lord would come to visit Adam. We never find, and the Lord came to visit Cain and Abel. Now, whether it was Adam that taught his children how to live like this or not, we don't know. But this is the first dealings that we ever got from these two guys, Cain and Abel. The Bible says in the process of time, it came to pass that they brought an offering to God. They brought a gift to God. They brought a sacrifice to God. They brought a tribute to God. You know one thing? The Bible says God had respect. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. And Abel, he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Do you know why? Do you know why the Lord had respect? One of the reasons why the Lord had respect is because your offering reflects you. One of the ways we see you is through your offering. One of the ways the spirit world sees you is through your offering. Let me give you an example. If I come to your house and you prepared a very good meal, assumptions meal, very good one, and your husband is at home, both of you are so excited that your man of God came, and your wife, out of excitement, pulled the plate she kept since 1940 for a special visitor, and no visitor has come. So she pulled it and washed it and the husband said, yes, clean it very well. And began to dish the meal. And let's say inside the stew that she made, she had about six pieces 
of Turkey, big, big ones. And the wife, your wife, out of excitement, puts the six of them in a bowl and put enough rice, salad, and things, and carried it and dropped it before the man of God and said, eat. And your husband, the husband began to look. Then you ask the wife, why did you have to do all of this? And she will tell you. I know in my heart, there is no way that man would finish all of them. Whatever that is left, will eat from it. But we will give him first. Then the man in question says, come on. Watching us. Come on, guys. Is it, she is my pastor too. Remove three. They are big, big talkie. Put three there. If you chop and finish in car. <laughs> eh? Some pastor, if you finish this thing. Give him the one way, give him. If you chop and finish, you leave him. And he drops it before the man, Pam. And the pastor blesses it, eats little, and take one, and eat half of the one, and drops it. When the Lord would bless, let's say they had an argument in the kitchen before bringing it out. The two of them, God sees them through their offering. For one, he sees that you give all to the Lord. Even though the Lord took part of it, and gave you the left over. And the other one gave three. And still have three left. Even though the Lord beat them. He would have respect for this one. And not have respect for this one. You know why? Because through your offering I see you. The intention first was the heart. God saw the heart of the giver more. I will show you something now. Look at what the Bible says. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings that all his animals, the first children, the first cattle, the first dog, he brought one, 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 all of them and brought it to the Lord. And the Lord was looking at it. Nobody sat him down to teach him the principles of giving. No, sir. Then the other one was a farmer. He probably would have gone there. Give me the verse, verse five. Verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect and Cain was very wrought and his countenance fell. The guy went, Cain went and got some crops. This one too good. Now God, you know they chop all these things. Gather these crops together and offer to God. And the Lord saw Abel through his offering and saw Cain through his offering. It was not what you brought but what your heart redeemed after. It was not what you dropped on the altar, but what your heart said while you were bringing it. It was how you weighed him and how you rated God that God was looking after. This was the first offering. And I want you to know, there are many offerings today that the Lord is rejected, though it's still on the altar. And the Lord told him, why is your countenance fallen if you have done well? So we find Elkanah, God ordained god brought god obtained we saw him giving out things that if you are ever going to function and the earth is going to deliver goodies then i want you to understand something that you can't escape from this principle your first fruit this is the order of obtaining things from the lord remember None of them were forced by the Lord. The Bible says, in the process of time, in the process of time, Abel gave the first and the best. Cain brought some. You know, there are people who in their heart, I, I think I'm done here, I'll just give a little explanation and I'm okay. Because if I stretch it, I'll lose many of you. Go and check this teaching of today. Take it. Huh? This was heaven's download. 
If you hear it, listen to it. Try and get messages you've heard about first fruit. If they, if they, if they tally, come. Because I sat down, looked at it, read, listened to what the Lord was saying. I said, and I was reading the same Bible. I never saw it like that. That they brought gifts. The word offering means a gift. They brought a sacrifice. And they brought, you look at those three things. A tribute. A tribute is something you owe. That came. Abel looked and said, the owner of the earth and the land is God. It's a tribute. Which means the first that he gave me, I should give him back first. Because everything belongs to him. And if the earth is going to yield mercy, riches, and goodness, then you must honor him who owns the earth. And in honoring him, you give him the first fruit. God said, don't come and roll. Don't come and kneel down. I can understand those acts of worship and honor, but I want you to understand the place of first fruit. And in the rhythm of the first fruit, your heart beats faster. Your heart is louder than what you are giving. It is not how big or how small, but what your heart resonates in the spirit. What is your heart saying? You may be earning 30,000. Look at me. Do you know that it says you bring all your first fruit, including the increase? And this year they told you that they have increased your salary to 35,000. And you are giving your first fruit. The increase also belongs to the Lord. I always teach those who are with me. I say, listen, if you're working, there are 12 months in a year. Take it that 11 months belongs to you and one belongs to God. And that is how you order your year. That is how to command without speaking. It's one of the ways you command without speaking. That you look at the earth and you take the first that the Lord has given, which is the best. Some people have issues because they are into business. They find it difficult to say, this is what comprehensively is my first. And this is what I tell them. What does your heart? Many a times I've seen people who in their giving, they take something and they are going to the altar and the spirit of the Lord says, no, add something to it. Follow your heart because that is where the heartbeat is more than what you are carrying. This is where God is speaking more than what you are carrying. Sometimes you might even earn 50,000 as a salary and you take it but you have a saving somewhere and you pick the 50,000 that is supposed to be your first fruit and you are going to the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is telling you go to the bank withdraw 20,000 and put it and you are asking but that is not the right order but you do not know that in the realm of the spirit what he's doing is to make room for your shifting that you are more than the 50 that you are giving but if you do not make room for it he says your bands will not be filled This is how the yearly worship and sacrifice is done. That you say to the Lord with all your heart, Father, all that you have given to me, the first is yours. Do you remember that king who vowed in the battle? He was losing. And he said, Lord, if you give me victory, the first thing that comes out, animal and human, I give you. The moment the Lord had it, because he had respect, it was the only daughter. The, word, the wife cried, said, consider her dead. It was a vow. Here is a brother. You are contesting with another brother for a contract. I've given you the way out. Tell the Lord, Father, if this business pulls through and the contract is going to keep flowing, whatever I make in the first, I give to you. In the word of the spirit, the one who gives the most rules. Stay here and be doing all night. You are only disturbing tenants. I'm telling you how the spirit world rules. They will tell you whatever that appears on that mirror belongs to the God of Mammon. And you go there, it's the one you love. They never take the one you hate. And here you are giving to God an offering that does not affect you. And you want to win. Come and win. Come. Come and win it. It was said it was said that before mercy lifted the word cup, 
he said to himself and in his heart, told the wife, if I win this World Cup, everything that will come to it, I will give it to charity. He never said in all the three World Cups, only this one. How come he won this one? And the spirit world opened to him. A man had broken it by sacrifice. Give it to him. And he lifted it. When he was lifting it, the joy of lifting it was more. He knew that, listen, I must keep to all that I said. Every gay is going to charity. But yet, there's a man who said, then go grieve. But he was not the only one that played the football. There were other 11 players. I want to tell you something. Because of one man, your boat can sink. And because of one man, you can raid. A family can shine just because of one man. Hey, hey, men, before you marry, open your eyes. I don't mean physical, spiritual. Because you can go down by the woman you marry. And you can go up by the woman you marry. Be looking at beauty and, and shape. Nah, the baby is sexy. Oh, guy is sexy forever. Are you with me? Only you know what. I'm telling you the truth. I'm a man of God, so I know what I'm saying. You know what you are thinking, but I'm telling you the truth. You have parents, your mother. Go and check her. Most times you come to greet her, she's naked. Everything, I your honor. They lose their shame by age. It's no longer relevant, but there was a time it was relevant. Whatever you hold relevant today, a time will come. If you have five million and you are thinking it's relevant and you will not submit it to God and say, Father, make this irrelevant thing becomes relevant. Times and season will shift and your five million will be there to be useless. Do you want to ring? I'm showing you how. There are people who will cut my message and criticize me. No problem. But it's the word of God I'm sharing. I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm a stupid giver. I can give you. You will not know I've given you. We'll be discussing. I'll be targeting your head. <laughs> yearly. I'm asking the Lord now. Lord, what is it? Oh, tell me early. So I put my house in order. You want to win? Go and ask men who are in the awkward. They will tell you. I want to be the chief in my market. They say, what will it take? And the grandma will say, the grandma will say, will ask. The moment he points, say, look at, ha, ah, that's my son. He'll be an imbecile for life. Go and think about it. God told Abraham, give me your son in three days, sacrifice him. I said, sacrifice. It must keep you weak. God will make a demand. It will keep you alive and keep you awake all through the night. You'll be wondering. I mean yearly. A man came to me. He said, sir, I want this business. I said, go, you have it. He went, came back again. He said, I've submitted. They've not called anybody. He said, but sir, I believe in your God. If you pray for me. I said, go, you have it. <laughs> the third time he came, he said, sir, tell me what to do. I said, now you're ready. <laughs> Many of you will be coming and be going until you ask me, sir, what do I do? No destiny opens up by it does not work. I, I know what I'm telling you. Sir, what do I do? I said, go and tell him. Tell God 50% of what he gives you, you will give him. He says, sir, is that all? I said to start with. He went there, spoke. I said, go. He got home. About finished beating. They called him. Come tomorrow. Your name was picked. He called me. He said, sir, they kept quiet all this while. 
How come they spoke? Because you spoke. The things were written for our learning. If you think I will keep preaching, till Jesus comes, say lie. Act so heaven will act. We will worship now. Yearly worship and what sacrifice. Then you will tell him, Father. Uh, second week in February, second Sunday, we'll be giving our first week. Tell him. It's only you I have. It's only him. Some of you are sitting on proposals. What the idea God gave to you, you know that <laughs> hey, if God give you one million, tight is how much? 100,000. You still have 900,000. What kind of, is that not you will still say no on top of your own. Then some people are preaching. I don't have time. I would have shown you. They said Jesus Christ has become our first fruit. There are seven feasts that the Jews observe. One of them is the feast of the first fruit. It's a feast. Before a feast, it was a principle. It was a life first that a man cultivated. Before he now gave it as a feast. And the reason for the feast was because of the coming of Christ. That is the Christocentric part of the gospel. But that is not all about the Bible. That is where he became the first fruit. But also you read in the book of Romans chapter 16. Paul was talking about the church in Asia. In Achaia, the house of Achaia. He says, for they are the first fruit. Are they also Christ? Because when you read the Bible, when you are an argumentative person, you, you, you feel that people are, you, you want to drive people away from the, the house in Achaia. Are they also, are they also Christ? But they were the first fruit. What's the name of your first child? Valor. That's your first fruit. Is it Jesus Christ? No, sir. He said anything that opens your womb is me. First fruit. Jesus opened the womb of Mary. First fruit. So people can twist it. Twist. Don't give that. It's not New Testament. I just look at them. Father, be, be giving me. Let me be giving you that. Mm. Be giving me. Let the other people may they not have to be giving, but be giving me. I'll be honoring you with the tithe because it is more blessed to give than to receive. I want to speak to those who by reason of understanding once their year opened with worship and sacrifice. If you're doing business, you're working, whatever, the first fruit is unto the Lord. So the second Sunday of February is going to be our yearly word. We'll, we'll come here, worship. That day is going to be worship and sacrifice. We tell him, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. 